Welcome back to Sacred Success Salon, where we are speaking with amazing guest speakers, leaders, awakened conscious leaders, and asking them about the moments when they realized that they get to lead themselves in order to lead their mission. I am your host, Anna Kowalska, and today it is my honor and true pleasure to introduce you to our guest, Reverend Amira Hall. Welcome. Thank you. It's such a true honor to be with you. My heart's just fluttering with joy to take all this in, Anna. You're creating amazing work. Oh, thank you, Avira. I'm so glad to have you here. Just our quick connection before we click the record button. It was already, there's just so much beauty in it, so much richness. So let me say a few words about who you are so the audience knows who they're listening to. So Amira is known as a soul mystic. She's a spirit medium, medical intuitive, a manifesting mentor for over 40 years. She has been training and leading people through their own experience of awakening. She's a best-selling author of Love Up Your Life. I love that. The Essential Guide to Spiritual Awakening and Manifesting Miracles 101. So great. You can read the rest about Amira under the video. Let's get into it. So Amira... Could you please share with us that one time that comes to your awareness right now and you realize there is something here for you to lead, a mission, a purpose, a work you are here to do. But before you do that, you have to lead yourself. You're right on about that. And for me, I was traveling in Egypt on a spiritual quest back uh, 24 years ago. And what happened is I had a near-death experience. Mm -hmm. And at the time, I had a successful career. I was a six-figure income earner. But when I returned from Egypt, everything fell apart. My relationships crumbled. I isolated. I was full of anger and depression and anxiety. And I struggled every single day to get out of bed. I didn't want to go on, quite honestly. And then I got fired. And it took some time before I started to realize that this was a pivotal moment in my life when I tried to get work again and I couldn't get hired to save my soul. I had, I would get to the third interview and this happened with three different companies, third interview at, for, for really high, high level jobs. And I didn't get selected. And it was like spirit saying, no, 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 you are not going back into that. So I, I had to surrender. I mean, I was, it was painful, but it was also, well, it was scary to be quite honest. I was scared shitless <laughs> and um, I knew I had to do something different and I had to make it up. There was no, there was no map. There was no game plan. And um yeah, so so that's where it all got launched. That's so great. Okay, I'm going to ask you more questions, but you already shared a couple of things that I think will be really crucial for a lot of people who are already aware of what's going on in for humanity in our field. But these are the things that are happening for them, right? Things are falling apart. Their their jobs are going away. I just spoke with a client yesterday who said, oh yeah, I tried to go for a part-time job, trying to hold on to something maybe a part-time job, right? She's like, yeah, I got denied. I don't understand how because I fit the role perfectly, right? So, right. and the same thing is happening with business owners too. Old, The old business structures are falling away. So I heard you say that you, you are again, everything fell apart and then you got fired and then you couldn't get hired. Did you know what was going on? Did you at the time consciously say, okay, I'm being steered away towards something different? No. I was in such pain and, and denial. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, even though I had started my own spiritual journey and started a couple entrepreneur ventures prior to this, you know, I was cocky and I figured I, at the time I had been, I had created a job where I could work at home. That was in 1996. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So I was an early adopter. I mean, yes. I've got this Aquarius moon, you know, and so I'm a front runner and then I get bored with things before as everybody else catches on, you know, I'm on this, <laughs> you know, it's kind of frustrating, but there I was working at home. I was meditating every day. I was going for a swim at lunchtime because I could mm -hmm. and getting in my sun, getting in my exercise, mm -hmm all the things that I thought were right. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and just crossing the hall to work, I felt like I was managing my stress and, and, and my empathic sensitivities. But 
No, I had to do something radically different and it took some time. What happened for me is because I couldn't function, because after the near-death experience, when I came back to the U.S., I mean, I was seeing walking black and white paper dolls in the airport when I landed in JFK. Everything was two-dimensional, flat, and full of grief and anger and pain. And that carried with me for about a year. Oh, wow. I I didn't see things in the same way. I mean, I thought I was losing my freaking mind. You know, I had a book with me. (laughs) I'll never forget this. And I, I couldn't look up. I couldn't look at the people in the airport or anything going on around me. Mm-hmm. I just kept thinking I was reading the book. It was all upside down, but I just had to focus on something that I thought was real. Mm-hmm. So my reality of what was real had taken such a massive blow and mm-hmm. shift. Mm-hmm. When I got back to San Diego and started breathing in the air and and, and that that went away, I figured, okay, I'm okay, but yet I couldn't go shopping. I couldn't go to a market. I couldn't figure out my way that I was hearing things and seeing dead people and not able to comprehend it Mm -hmm. in a way that meant, okay, I had a corporate linear left brain and I was pretty darn functional and successful. All of a sudden that shit didn't work. And it was like somebody unplugged me and I was like a light bulb that had been unscrewed. And yeah, so I think when I searched out a bunch of different healers and therapists to find out what happened to me, Mm -hmm. one, I I refused to go see a psychologist Mm -hmm. because I figured they're going to lock me up and throw away the key. Mm. Think really cuckoo crazy. Yeah. And I, I... (laughs) funny that I say this I didn't think I was but you know from another perspective it looked I was loopy yeah um I went to different healers and psychics and they told me something different every single one and I think the the biggest kick in the head was when I said or heard the voice Amira you've got to find your own answer Mm. it's not out there Yes, there's something or some modality that could perhaps facilitate it. Yeah. But that's when I went on the journey of understanding the very nature of who I was, which is energy. Yeah. And this is back in 1998. So, you know, the real notion of quantum energy or a non-physical reality wasn't a common conversation that you'd have around the water cooler. Mm -hmm. So I literally immersed myself. And for the first, probably for a whole year, I would just go to these classes and just not know if anything was happening. Yeah. I felt completely stuck in a a dark vortex and I I couldn't figure out which way was up. So I'm going to, I'm going to pause you right there because what you just shared, I think will, will also support, I mean, everything you're sharing is so, first of all, thank you for your authenticity and, and being real about how things are when we do have a certain awakening to to human experience and then have to deal with seeing it, feeling it, being it in the world, yeah. <laughs> especially at a time when, when you did, when people, you couldn't just have a conversation like this at the time. Well, and there was no internet. Right. So you yeah. couldn't connect, you couldn't connect yeah. with other people. Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. It, was, it was a rough road. And, you know, the answers are within Mm -hmm. But the problem was my mind was well-trained like everybody else that went to college Mm -hmm. and did corporate, you know, their corporate check boxes um, were well-trained to stay on focus to, you know, attract your goals and Mm -hmm. what success is. And we measure ourselves and compare ourselves. And that just all went out the window and I had no framework. Mm -hmm. And so it, again, getting quiet. And having a tool or having a way to access that deeply embedded, I want to say embedded, because I think it's like a code, you know, it's her heart code that's deeply embedded and wired and that wants to resonate with the outside world. And that's our challenge is unplugging or uncovering it, not unplugging it, Um, unplugging from the rest of the noise and the distractions the overwhelm of the world today is just, you know, yeah. it's, it's derailing all of us. Yeah. Something else you said that I think was, was, was pretty, 
powerful to me was you didn't think anything was happening for a whole entire year. You would go into classes because I've heard that from people who are at the beginning of their journey nowadays too, where they will go and they seek modalities one after the other. And they're like, nothing's happening. Nothing's changing. Right. Well, first of all, that's the number one mistake people are making is they're, they're, yes, they're hungry, they're greedy, they're going to the buffet, and they're eating everything on it. And then they go home and barf, right? Mm -hmm. It's kind of like that. But so you know, so, anyway, so visual. I, so good. Well, we want it. We're so desperate. We want we want the fix, right? You know, shoot me yeah. up. Give it to yeah. me right now. <laughs> and the point is that I realized is find a teacher that resonates with you. Mm -hmm. Find somebody that you just trust. Mm -hmm. And and you can you know, maybe get a little bit of what they're saying, but it's building a level of trust and confidence not with the teacher, with yourself. Yes. And and trusting that they will guide you in the perfect way. Yeah. See, we're yeah. so conditioned to, you know, drive through and instant mm -hmm. downloads that we don't understand that the spiritual world does. Yes, it all happens instantly, but we're in a t 3D time reference. Mm -hmm. We need to give it time yeah. to show us. And it's building that inner trust and confidence mm -hmm. and replicating it and keep building. It's like going to the gym. Mm -hmm. You can't walk into the gym and walk out looking like a bodybuilder. Mm -hmm. yeah. You got to give it some yeah. time. You got to really dedicate yourself. Mm -hmm. You've got to follow the food recommendations. You've got to get your sleep. You know, there's a, there's a pattern, right. Of, mm -hmm. of that type of success. Same is true and more difficult to form or contain when we're talking, I think the spiritual realm or the energetics, because none of us have been taught about this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and None of us are prepared. We're, and we're just trusting everybody on YouTube um, you know, with tarot cards or this or that, or somebody did a webinar and then you automatically think that yeah. they're it. So I think some research and some conversation and, and building a level of finding that teacher and then following one modality. Yeah. Don't you know, jump around. That is so powerful, Amira. And I don't think we spoke about it in this particular salon and probably none of the salons, but this is the conversation that I'm hearing in, in, in our field. Allow yourself to go deeper and going deeper means you, you do find somebody. And like you said, take some time, do some research. Don't just jump into the first person, feel the resonance. And I love what you said. Don't do it to trust the teacher. Do it so you can trust yourself. So you are in the field with somebody who has had the experience of their own so you can trust yourself. That is so powerful right there. And Anna, you said something so key because a lot of, you know, I don't want to disparage any of the great light workers that are mm -hmm. on the path, but, you know, back in 2009, I was on my one of my many journeys to Egypt and I was asking my guides you know, what does it mean of this great spiritual awakening? Like for 2012, there was, I was part of a book that came out and all the great, everybody was talking. That was the buzz, right? Great spiritual awakening. And my guide said to me, imagine today you're a caterpillar mm -hmm. and tomorrow you're a butterfly and beware, there will be many charlatans among you. So in our awakening, in our eagerness to fly through the garden mm -hmm. and experience all the wonder, there are many landmines. Yeah. There are many teachers that want to be and might have the mindset and might have read a couple books and done yeah. a weekend training, mm -hmm. but that doesn't constitute the, the experience, the life experience yeah. and the personal investment that the teachers mm -hmm. made in healing their stuff. Yes. Yes. You know, my stuff still comes up, but I've been yep. working on it for 40 years. Mm -hmm. And I would like to admit that, you know, I ain't perfect yet. Yeah. Yeah. God darn it. I don't have those wings that I'm flutting around with, but <laughs> you know, I do my best and, and, mm -hmm. and, and being, being real about it, 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 take some courage. And mm -hmm. I'm, I haven't always been there, right? I've yeah. often tried to hide mm -hmm. my pain from my clients and, and mm -hmm. students, because um, I felt that that was a sign of weakness. And I think 
now we're we're merging into that phase too of you know let's be real yeah yeah so powerful so beautiful so let's fast forward so you discovered your work you you did the work you discovered your work and now you've been around for clearly like you said you said it not me <laughs> A few decades, <laughs> yeah, forty years, yeah. yeah, and and twenty over twenty years in the field, like actively yeah. in the field, yeah. Yes. What do you see that is the opportunity for those who, and let's set the charlatans aside for a moment, because I do agree, right? At one point, I have to say this. At one point, I made fun of, and I still do, and I make fun, and I only make fun of it light, lightheartedly, but there is truth to it. People who spew the words, like I listened to this one podcast, and again, this is said with love. I'm sure that the person means really well, no names are necessary, but the podcast was was filled with a string of the words that are buzzwords. And I walked away and I'm like, I don't know what I just heard. It didn't touch me. It didn't move me. There was no substance to it. There was just a string of words. <laughs> so, and, and, and the most important thing there is it's not the words. Right. Because I pray to God that everybody's feeling my heart mm -hmm. and, yeah. and my commitment to my soul. Yeah. And that I'm committed to me first yeah. And that hopefully translates into the work I do. Yeah. No, actually, you, you are, you definitely didn't use the buzzwords. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can, if you want, I can lay a little on you. But no, that, you know, at the end of the day, um, there are a lot of people being seduced. There are mm -hmm. a lot of people being tricked. And that's part of their journey also. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I know along the way I've been, I've had my challenges with a couple shaman and, mm -hmm. and different things. And that was part of my boom, you wake up now or, yeah. and get out of a, a, a difficult, no win situation mm -hmm. um, and take your power back. Yeah. And so that's what I did. Wow. Yeah. That's great. You, you, even those opportunities, even those situations are the opportunities for us. So what is the opportunity for those, for those right now who are conscious and awake, and maybe they are at the beginning of the journey, but those who are you guys watching right now, either you've just began your business or you are along the way of, of bringing your soul's work into the world, making an impact. What is the opportunity that you are seeing from the, from the experience of decades you've been around? I think the most important thing, I hope I'm answering your question correctly, is that knowing and having a sense that you're here to do the work or to share your light, the most important part about this is grounding it and owning it. Mm -hmm. And really, it's not just words. It goes way beyond your words. It's your presence. How are you really showing up in everything that you do? You know, from the grocery store to, mm. you know, a fallout, let's say, with a colleague or something. Yeah. You know, how are we showing up? Yeah. And are we in that heart center? And ask, you know, it's it's a challenge when we're dealing with all this tech stuff and, and trying to keep the business, you know, yeah. building and mm -hmm. and all of those aspects that are required these days pull back. Mm -hmm. how how am I am I running from my heart and knowing that my intention is pure or am I getting sort of sucked away in my head I think it's a, a mind heart integration mm -hmm. and it's a continual challenge for me mm -hmm. yeah but was that what you were looking for or? yeah yeah you, you you answered it beautifully not perfectly because I didn't have intention I wanted to see okay. what comes through okay. you when I ask you <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So that that was really beautiful. And you just came back from Egypt from your own journey. Could you share some of what you've experienced bring in some of the some of this beautiful juicy energy of Egypt, of Egypt which we connected for a second right before? <laughs> yeah, it's uh, I don't know what to say other than magical in in every step of the way, mysterious. Um, I know that doesn't really describe it. Um, I mentioned I've been 13 times now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's a continual journey. I mean, I can, some of the trips, I can't differentiate from the others. Mm -hmm. And um, one powerful lesson, one time I was meditating in the Great Pyramid, we always book private time. So for everybody on the planet, 
were the only ones at that time. Mm -hmm. So there was a small group of six of us inside mm -hmm. the King's Chamber on the full moon eclipse. Wow. And um, so that was extremely profound when one of the persons out was out in the bus and couldn't make it up to the top and looked up out of the bus and took a picture of the sky, the night sky, because we were in there from 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. And she got an inverted picture of the Pleiades. It literally mm -hmm. looked like the stars were like turned up and, and, and they were super bright and the formation was super obvious. It was shocking. Mm -hmm. I know that we opened a portal. Yeah. to the Pleiades. So it was wow. extremely profound. But one lesson and message that I got one time in there was there was, I was in the, we chant and we take turns laying in the giant sarcophagus and the group chants Om around us. And the sound inside the Great Pyramid has never been achieved anywhere on the planet. The, the acoustics is just phenomenal. So everybody's chanting Om and it's in, you know, one starts and the other one ends and it's just the music of the celestial, you know, mm -hmm. space. And I got this vision of these masters descending this great staircase and it was like illuminated staircase and all these masters have like different costumes on. They came from different eras and times and, and places and they were coming for me. And I'm like, wow, is this like my birthday? Oh, I'm so excited. You know, this grand procession. <laughs> and they came down. And then after the staircase, they stood in line, single file. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, the line divided. And the lines and they spoke telepathic, telepathically. Mm -hmm. We are the masters of the light. Mm -hmm. And then the other line said, we are the masters of the dark. Mm -hmm. They looked identical wow and they said who do you follow and so the the message was of course i follow the light but it was still to this day so profound that we get tricked like who is the leader of the light who is giving me the truth who is showing me mm -hmm. the way for my soul mm -hmm. and path so that that's sort of a lesson I carry with me. And that's part of what I do and why I do it. Mm -hmm. um, but I think back to our conversation, there will be many charlatans. Yeah. You know, the sheep dressed in or what is it? Wolf in sheep's clothes. Mm -hmm. you, you can't tell the outside of that mm -hmm. uh, prep package and you have to do your own work. And then, you know, kind of. Yeah. Do you, do you yeah. think that, um, on the other side, there will be people who are so afraid that they will call the, the true light workers. They will still call them charlatans because out of fear. Say that again. Yeah, sure. So do you think that this, the, the time we are in, right, the space we are in with people awakening and those of us stepping into the work that we are doing, which is soul based, do you think that often or at all? People who are just awakening but are so afraid will call the real, the light, the light leaders, charlatans out of fear. Yes. I think they just don't have a clear perception of yeah. what truth looks like. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've all been BSed up to the wazoo over the last couple of years. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's starting to shake up and break up. And some people, what they call awakening, um, I don't call that the real awakening. I mean, it's part of it, you know, as our economic system, the political system and et cetera, et cetera, starts falling apart, the healthcare system um, and starting to see the truth. You know, there's charlatans amongst us, not only in the spiritual workers, but, you know, in the medical office. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and are they misrepresenting something that they know is different? No, they, they actually believe that. Yeah there there's whatever so i guess the truth is is finding our truth mm -hmm. you know not blaming or finger pointing or name calling and and being self-righteous mm -hmm. right what's true for me and sticking with it so and beautiful. regardless of how the chips fall staying the course and not bending mm -hmm. that is a true light worker yeah that is wow. a master 
Yeah, I love what you just said, regardless of how the chips fall. I mean, that's the whole basis for, for the series, Leader, Lead Thyself, is, is the bringing to attention that we, we are at a time where we really do have to be discerning what is my truth, my truth, and then following it. And I love how you just said, no matter how the chips fall right? Because there are, there is a shaking up going on and we speaking to spiritual business owners and conscious business owners. So there is this whole aspect of it where, you know, our perceived financial safety and security of what worked up until now will go away. So as we wrap up, is there any wisdom that you can share with us? Because again, you have done it for so long and you've gone from a very practical corporate, successful corporate career at a time where it wasn't easy to explain what you do, you dove into your light work, created a business out of it, have been successful ongoingly. So is there any wisdom that wants to come through you for those who are maybe just beginning or at the beginning stages? Find a teacher that you resonate with or a mentor, because I tried to do it alone so many times mm -hmm. and I could have progressed so much quicker had I had the right backup team, the backup mm -hmm. singers, you know, to, that saw in me the potential when I failed and floundered or struggled, you know, losing sight of where I was going. Mm -hmm. And when, so finding someone that could give you that support and be there for you, I think as we build community, so key. Yeah. Um, and for us to really honor our hearts and um, be kind to each other, mm -hmm. not compete, so, not compete. Oh, right there, not compete. I mean, that, that that's a huge part of my message too. There is no, there is no competition when you, when you work from your uniqueness, right? From your, your unique delivery of your light work into the world. Oh, so amazing. This conversation is just so delicious. <laughs> Thanks. I'm so excited myself. Yeah, the energy of it is just really beautiful. So I know you have more for the audience and there is a way for you guys to get into Amira's world. I know you have a gift. It's the button below the video. But before you go, what is behind the button? <laughs> What's re behind it? Well, it's a three-part video training that I put together to help you identify perhaps, you know, where you're at right now, sort of taking sort of a... Um, an inventory, you know, how to create the life that you deserve. You've got to figure out where you're at right now, right? In order to map out where you want to go um, and to learn about the number one thing that's literally keeping you stuck. And it doesn't matter what aspect of that. And then three ways to create new habits, you know, to, it's just a simple training, a step-by-step -step mm -hmm. system that you can develop and, and integrate that is, is like, you know, learning how to use a third arm. Um, but it's, it's so critical, right? Very critical. And I love that part that you said, knowing where you are, because I mean, this is a simple, simple um, saying that. GPS, you put it in GPS where you want to go, but if you don't tell GPS where you're starting, GPS right. won't tell you how to get there. Yeah, and, and this training is is just a simple training. I give you a workbook. You can go through it yourself to give your own assessment um, in order to reset, right? We, we're all looking for that big old easy button and that reset button. God knows the last three years have been yeah. full of trauma, full of anxiety yeah. and pain mm -hmm. from loss. But that, if, if it goes un, unresolved, mm -hmm. it is like energy uh, booby traps yeah. that are setting us up. Okay. So we want to get that identified. We want to clear it out and we want to be able to have a clear focus on where we're going. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so beautiful. Thank you, Amira. So make sure you claim the gift so you can find out where you are, <laughs> get clear on where you are, get clear on your habits. So many beautiful parts to that gift. Press the button, golden button below the video, claim your gift, not only claim your gift, but get into Amira's world so you can get more access to this beautiful, delicious energy that she clearly embodies. Thank you, Amira, for being part of the salon, your wisdom, for sharing your story with us. It's powerful and I know it's going to support many in where they are right now. So thank you. Thank you very much. Make sure you claim the gift and we'll see you at the next conversation. Bye for now.